guys, welcome to Unsided Dice Podcast's YouTube channel and this is our first video in our loosely titled series all about the bash. In this series of videos what we're going to be looking at is me sharing with you guys out there my love for this section of the hobby. And when I call about this section of the hobby I'm talking about kit bashing, I'm talking about conversion, I'm talking about scratch building. In this series of videos, what I'm hopefully going to do is try and give you guys some inspiration and some ideas for not only the process, but also coming up with those models. Now, this is the part of the hobby that I probably like the most. I'm an avid painter, I'm an avid gamer, but kit bashing and being able to create something completely unique for myself is probably one of the ones that I get the most satisfaction from. Being able to take all those mounting of odds and sods that are in my uh, bits box, taking all those little bits that are left on the sprues after I've put models together, being able to put all those together in a way that creates something probably completely unique for myself. Now, I will preface this with saying that I'm in no way any kind of master at this. I just do it because I enjoy it. If you want to see some of the level of kit bashing conversions that are available to you, there's plenty of other social media sites and plenty of other videos on YouTube to be able to go and interact with those communities and watch those videos and see what the pinnacle people in this genre of the hobby can come up with. All I want to do is be able to share with you guys what I'm doing and if you do take some inspiration from it and do turn around and go I quite like that, I quite like the idea of being able to put something like that together for myself then I'll class my jobs done and I'll go away a happy man. So in anyway enough about any of the waffle let's get down to it let's see what we got on the table shall we. So if anyone of these builds, there's always that uh, point of inspiration when you find out and get an idea for something you want to do. And the inspiration for what I'm going to do in this video has come from uh, these two figures. Now, anyone who will remember these is, uh, is as old as I am. These are from the 1980s, sculpted by Alan Perry, I believe. And these are a couple of the old Chaos Squats. Now, I found these models again at uh, my mother's and I thought to myself, I used to love, you know, Space Dwarves and the, the squat models when they come out. It was my, uh, the, the one that I went to uh, during the Rogue Trader days and uh, I often miss some of the figures. So there are plenty of companies who do um, sci-fi dwarves at the moment. But again, because of this, I was looking at projects that I could do for myself. So I wanted to see if I could kit bash together a Space Dwarf. Now, as we've um, a lot of blue piece of things, for those who remember, here's one I've made earlier to test the concept of it. So basically what you can see from this model is that I've used one of the bodies from um, the Age of Sigma Dwarves. I think the um, Arconauts they're called. Um, somebody will obviously be able to correct me um with the proper pronunciation i don't never keep up with um how many times gw changed their names of different models um he's pieced together using a standard uh, imperial guardsman's head and the arms themselves for those of you who recognize will see that they come from the uh is it the tempesters the shock troops of the imperial guard and it just looks really nice really put together and obviously to give it the uh, the proper dwarf look, there's a green stuffed uh, beard on here. So what we're going to do, we're going to put together um, a leader model for this because I, I might want to do like a little troop of these guys. So we're going to have a look about getting that model together. So these are all the parts that I'm going to be using for that model. So I've already glued down the Arconauts body to uh, one of the 25-30mm uh, mil bases. Get it ready for the point. I've got the uh, guardsman's head there 
Um, a power fist again from the uh, Tempestors kit. But I came across this arm. Now this arm is from one of the Chaos Space Marines. And I just love the um, power axe that he's got in his hand. And I thought, you know, what self-aware um, dwarf leader would never have a, a power axe on the go. So I think we're going to use that and make him more of a, a close combat type model. Now, what I like doing at the first stage is, I know a lot of people just get in and just start gluing bits together. But what I want to do is I want to have a look at how the model is going to look together. So for this, I've got some old blue tack poster putty, etc. And what we're going to do, we're just going to stick the parts together on the model to see exactly what the, uh, what the finished look might come up with. And doing it this way as well, it, let you, it lets you um, position parts and, and understand um, the dynamics of the model itself. You see now, well, having that there, if I just placed the head that was going straight forward, it'd get blocked a little bit. But if I was to turn it to the side, see if I can get this with my hard hand. You can see now having him look um, off to the side rather than on the front. I think it makes him look a little bit more heroic, a little bit more at the ready. So just using this uh, poster putty just gives you a little chance just to test the pose of the model you're going for before you go in. And the reason I wanted to do this is because the first piece that I actually want to stick down is the head. But it's also... Often, like we say, it's the, probably the last piece that you, you want to actually put on the model because you want to see how all the arms interact with each other first. But there's another reason for this why I wanted to put the head on first. So now with the head um, stuck on, it's time to move into the sculpting part of this. So again, sculpting part is, as we know, this guy is going to be that green stuff beard that we need to uh, put onto this model. So a lot of people, when they're um, sculpting facial hair, will just dump a, a large blob, single blob of uh, green stuff onto the model and then carve away at it a little bit. Now, I don't tend to do that. What I tend to is try and get little slivers. So I'll just pull it to a point, the green stuff, and then I'll just prise it away. And you end up with little teasy bits such as this. You can then use that for start building up the beard itself. So you can see already that you've got sort of the main part from the chin onto the model. So all we're going to do is just keep going through that until we've got quite a few of them built up already. Try and keep them all to a uh, suitable length. I don't know, you know. Any dwarf, a suitable length for a beard is a uh, suitable length. Because already it's giving the overlying texture of um, hair already. But we're going to tidy that up in a second. So just a few more little bits and pieces. You don't need much green stuff for this at all. Anything more, more like the little green stuff dreadlocks at the moment, but it, you'll see it come together when we do the uh, the final part of it. So nice and easy to get together onto the actual model there. You can build it up, squash it onto his chin a little bit. And there you go. You've got the build up of the beard itself. Now, obviously, these are a bit, a bit thick, a bit wildly. So what you want to do is just get your... Um, Blade out, exacto blade, hobby knife, whatever you want to call it. And what we're going to do, we're just going to trace down the green stuff with a series of lines, just cutting a little bit more hair actually into that green stuff as well. And what it only does is uh, pulls it into place, but also gives you more defined little lines and you can use it for pushing it into the gaps getting it seated a bit more onto the model 
moving it into places that you might have lost. Now you can go in two ways. You can just drag it down with the blade like I'm doing, or if you find it sticking, you go in and just do lines, just pushing lines into it. You'll get the, pretty much the same effect uh, both ways, really. You just get it at the bottom, you push it into as many gaps as you want. Try and push it up onto the chin if you can. Square that off. Now obviously you want to make it a little bit more ragged at the bottom. So this is where the knife comes into play quite well. You can just get it and just go through and just cut individual lines out. Cut them backwards and forwards until the beard is where you want it to be. Now probably what I might do is just give it a bit more shape by just taking a bit of it off there with my knife. Give it a bit more point towards the end. Remove a bit of the green stuff that I've got on there. But again, go back in once you've done that. And then just tease those ends back in to the beard itself. Now this is where one of the nice things about having um, a camera a phone in front of you. Because if you're a little bit uh, short-sighted like I am, and to be able to see these details, because what you can do, obviously, with this... If you get your camera set up, you can actually zoom further into the model and have a look about what you what you've come up with. So you can see there the definition of the the individual strands that we've got just from passing that knife through, and that would really help when we paint it to be able to get those different layers out. I'm just going to zoom back out a little bit. Now, obviously, what we've got to do now is to put a uh, moustache on the guy. On the beard, so it's the same principle again. Just get me pin stuff back together. This time, you want to take a, a pinch of the smallest bit that you can, really, something akin to that. You can see how much of a sliver that is. Now, if I was going to try and push that on my finger, I'd just smudge it on. So, what you can do is just try and pick it up on the end of your blade and put it onto the model. Just using the uh, pressure of your blade itself. What is not going to work, is it? It's going to be one of those ones. So let's take that bit off again. One of the joys of doing this on camera. You never get it that it uh, does what you want it to. So let's try again. Trial and error a little bit. Okay. Maybe roll it out a little bit more. Okay. A little bit thicker, maybe. Good. What you can do as well, if you find it sticking, is just put a bit of uh, water on your, your blade itself, and this will stop it from actually sticking. So what I'll have to do now, instead of actually just sticking it onto the blade, we'll have to see if we can get it on the point. Get the point dug into it a little bit like that. Okay, so hopefully this one is going to be able to go underneath his nose a little bit more. It's one of those jobs that you could really do with extra fingers for. So there you go. Managed to get the blood, managed to get it stuck underneath his nose. And then all you want to do is bend it down into the rest of the beard itself. Okay. And then just go back in and just tidy up any of those edges, get it squashed more around the mouth until you've actually got, until you're actually pleased with the result itself. So I'm just going to take it underneath the nose a little bit. And then just tidy it into the areas that you want it. And then you might be able to, you want to, just open where the mouth should be. And there you go. Nice and easy green stuff. Beard stuck on the uh, side of a dwarf. So now once I've got that green stuff on, I've basically just stuck the uh, rest of the parts together. There's been 
no other real converting apart from um, that sculpting of the beard itself. So the arms are stuck on with, in position. I've got that uh, battle axe and it was just lucky enough that it's when it's seated on the um, seated on his uh, shoulder, it looks like he's uh, got the hilt of it and the butt of it standing in the ground. I'm sure I'll be able to like, build that up with a bit of basing material. So he just looks like he's standing over the top, surveying the uh, surveying the battlefield himself. Uh, the plume, uh, the plumes came from a chaos uh, space marine set, just like the uh, the um, axe has. So I just think it just gives um, the the standard run of the mill um, imperial guard heads um, a bit more, and it's it's going to be up to me to inject a, a brighter colour into the model when I get to when I get to painting myself. So there we go. So it's you know it's that relatively straightforward dwarf models, forty k bits, um, all GWK bits. And therefore, nobody should have uh, any complaints about you playing this at any GW shops if you turned up with a, uh, a kill team of these guys. Because, you know, the imagination for these uh, for these models is into the law. So, so there we go. So we've got a couple of these guys ready to go. Yeah, can't wait to uh, probably come up with the, uh, the other set. Some weird and wonderful weapons to go on to these guys themselves. And uh, that's it. So, thanks very much for watching this uh, inaugural one. Hopefully, um, you got something from this video. Hopefully, it's uh, a case of now you're not scared to uh, maybe do a little bit of addition of green stuff to your models. It's relatively easy. It's relatively straightforward once you get into it. It's not shouldn't be really scared of the process itself, and it's just taking bits and pieces from your box and see what works together. So always uh, try, like I said, to glue the um, use the poster putty or the blue tack and put the model together first so you're confident that all the bits you've chosen will actually come together. So, so there you go, our uh, 40K squat from the uh, new 40K bits and, bits and pieces. Uh, long live the 1980s, that's what we say. And... Uh, I'm sure now I've started to uh, convert these models up that some down the line GW are going to introduce a range of these guys back into uh, back into play. But, you know, at least I'll have my own unique models themselves. Uh, one of the things I did want to do is I wanted to put a um, challenge out as part of these All About the Bash videos. And hopefully that uh, you guys who are watching this are part of or soon will be part of our Facebook community and when you jump across there uh, what I want you to do is either put challenges down for myself to come up with something or if you have got bits and pieces lying around and you know you're not going to use them yourself maybe put myself um, a little bag of little bits together and send them in and let's see if I can come up with um, anything for one of these videos out of those bits and pieces that you guys have sent me. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching. Um, it's the first time I've done this, but you know, like and subscribe to the video. Hopefully, there'll be uh, a lot more content coming, not only these uh, kit bash videos and scratch building conversion videos, but also battle reports, and maybe some painting along the way as well. So thanks very much for being here at the start, and uh, hope to see you again soon.